Notches or bezels? This single statement has brought in a lot of discussion in the tech world, while half of the people are okay with notches and the other half criticize them. Amidst all this, Huawei has brought in something called a punch hole, which is literally a hole in the display that looks like this. So what does the Huawei Nova 4 pack in other than a piercing in the display? Let's find out. First things first, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the front camera located on the top left corner. Well, I had expected this hole to be a little smaller than it actually is and that's because Huawei's official images show a different story. Having used phones with notches and bezels for a long time, the Nova 4 is definitely a breath of fresh air. For me, new things are always welcome. And the punch hole does not look so bad. When I use the phone, I completely forget that there is a black circle on one of the sides of the phone. It's like notches, you get used to it. Sadly, the whole point of a display like this is to eliminate bezel, which hasn't been done completely. You still see a thick line on the bottom with bezels. Nonetheless, this solution to the notch problem definitely gets a thumbs up from me. I would definitely choose a punch hole display over a water drop notch. You can also hide it if you want to, but it just looks better with that setting turned off. I think of the punch hole display like this. It is a small notch that is not quite visible and does not pop out like other notch phones. And for those who are wondering, the camera is completely below the glass and yes, Huawei has included an LED notification light sensor which you don't see in phones ditching the traditional notch. And even though the light is in a weird position at the top, it still does the job for me. Now going for the aesthetics, the Nova 4 gives the vibe of P20 Pro's looks but the back does not look like a glass to me. Maybe it's a high quality plastic. And it feels hollow and just hear the sound. Having said that, it feels comfortable to hold and just goes along in your hands. The power button is located at the right position and is very tactile. The fingerprint sensor is also located just where I want it to be and it's really fast like other Huawei phones. Up front lies a 6.4 inch IPS LCD display with a full HD plus resolution. On paper, its competitor, the OnePlus 6T, certainly has an advantage due to its AMOLED display, but in real life, I found the Nova 4's display to be on par with the 6T. The IPS display is bright, vivid, and colorful. The touch responsivity is buttery smooth and the overall experience you get with the display is great. There is also a setting that lets you choose a personal display calibration so you can make the display pop out like the way you want to. What also pops out on the phone is the triple cameras at the back. There are three cameras stationed on the rear side that work for various different purposes. The Nova 4 I reviewed comes with a 20 megapixel primary camera, a 2 megapixel depth sensor, while the other 16 megapixel camera works as a wide angle lens. Okay, first let's talk about the aspect where a lot of smartphones don't shine the night environment. Taking both the Nova 4 and the OnePlus 60 out for a comparison, I took a few samples from both the phones and the first thing I noticed is that the 60 has better detailed image with good balance of exposure. Zooming into a couple of the samples, you will see that the Nova 4 loses details while the 60 does a good job. Also, some of the samples from the Nova 4 just look muddy and noisy. Even the saturation is much better in the images from the 60 as this image shows. The colors on the clothes have been popped out on the 60, don't you think? Now coming to the night mode, well, I have to mention that I don't use the nightscape feature the OnePlus 60 has. I don't like the images it produces, so I switched to the Google camera port instead. So comparing that against the Nova 4, I have to say that the quality of the samples you get will depend on the environment. In pitch dark, the samples are bad such as these flowers. But in the presence of hints of lighting, the Nova 4 does a better work than the 60. But the Nova 4 takes a lot of time to capture an image with night mode than the 60 does. In the daytime images, the details are a little better on the OnePlus 60 and one thing I noticed with the same image is that the 60 has natural colors overall as the Nova 4 has tried to darken them. The flowers in this image looks better on the OnePlus 60. Even the dynamic range is portrayed well by the 60 as the shadow details pop out without exposing the highlight details. 
but there were a couple of times such as this image where the Nova 4 has done a better work in handling the dynamic range. And when I talk about exposure, I have to say that almost all Huawei smartphones overexpose the images at times and this phone here is no different. If the saturation is considered, yes the colors on the pictures from the Nova 4 look like they pop out more, but if the colors are zoomed into, they are unnatural. The portrait mode is where both the devices do equally well, they have blurred out the necessary parts of the background and the subject has popped out quite well. The other major shining point about the Nova 4 is its ultra-wide lens. The camera is able to capture wide-angle shots just by a single swipe. And this is quite useful. So with the wide-angle lens at helm, I could capture wide-angle shots such as this. And even when I was in a crowded space where there was a little space to shoot photos, this image with the help of the lens became this. This feature has been very helpful for me and I will definitely miss it when I revert back to my daily driver. Unless Huawei forgets about this review unit and we don't return it back. Now the selfie is where the Nova 4 does well. Take these two samples as an example. My friend's shirt's color is red so you can definitely notice where the OnePlus 6T has done a blunder. The colors on the image does not match the actual color as my friend's shirt has turned pink and the color tone of the overall image is colder which looks unusual. The Nova 4 though nails the coloring and color tone. Talking about the portrait selfies, both the Nova 4 and the 6T are a hit or a miss. You will notice that both the phones could not identify my friend's ear as the subject. The Nova 4 has this lighting effect which can be applied to selfies but I didn't quite like it. And even though the Nova 4 does well on the selfie front, it fares bad in video quality. The videos are just too shaky and the colors quite dull. Plus, it can only shoot 4K videos at 30fps. Now, the performance. The Huawei Nova 4 is powered by the last generation Kirin 970. And we have seen the Kirin 970's performance on the Nova 3 and P20 Pro and it has never once let me down. Yes, when you compare it with the Snapdragon 845 powered OnePlus 6T, the benchmark tells a different story but in real life, the performance is quite good. I mean, it's not the OnePlus 6T level but the Kirin 970 is no slouch by any means. I played low-end to high-end games, browsed through a lot of applications and web pages, went through a ton of videos, but it has done everything in an effective manner. The phone even handles PUBG at highest settings. And the fact that it is able to do that is a win in itself. The Huawei Nova 4 only comes in a single RAM variant, which is 8GB DDR4X, so you don't have to worry about software hiccups if you are willing to cash in on this phone. Onto the software side of things, the Huawei Nova 4 runs on Android Pie based on EMUI 9.0.1 on top. Like I said earlier, you won't be facing any kinds of issues as far as the software is concerned. With the EMUI 9.0.1, Huawei has evolved and the optimization is top notch. I have noticed smooth performance than how it was previously on Huawei devices, and even some of the Huawei users have agreed to that. However, you have the same bloatware on the device which I have been complaining for a few years now. Huawei should get rid of these applications at least in phones sold out of China. And even for me as a reviewer, I have never really used these applications as I think they only take up the internal memory. And this is where the Oxygen OS shines as it is free of bloatware and it is one of the cleanest versions of Android with tons of tricks inside the box. Having said that, the Nova 4 also has several customizations. If you are a business person and want to keep your personal and business life separate, there is the private space feature. Likewise, you have motion control that consists of various gestures. Now before ending with the battery, let's talk about the extras. Extras really can make phones stand out these days and even phone companies are excelling in this aspect. So let's talk about the security options available on this device. The Huawei Nova 4 has both the fingerprint and face unlock feature. Both these options are snappy and if it wasn't for the unlocking animation, they would be as fast as the ones on the OnePlus 6T. Now onto the speaker, there is a single mono speaker grille on the device. 
Comparing them side by side, the speaker on the 6T is definitely louder than the Nova 4. However, there is the slightest bit of distortion on the OnePlus 6T while the audio is much cleaner on the Nova 4. In terms of storage, the Nova 4 is available only in one variant which is 128GB. One thing the 6T and the Nova 4 share is the lack of micro SD card slot. The earpiece on this device is in an unusual position at the extreme top. It did take some time for me to get used to it as my traditional call position made the volume slightest bit lower. But there was no issue in the call quality whatsoever. And I think I forgot to mention this, the Nova 4 has a huge huge advantage over the OnePlus 6T. And yes, you guessed it right, it's the headphone jack. Even though the jack is in the wrong place for me, it's on the top, I have loved using wired headphones on it. Let's talk about the battery now. The Nova 4 has a 3750mAh battery. Under heavy usage, it gave me a screen on time of around 5 hours 30 minutes, which will definitely increase for a normal user. Plus, there is an option here that lets users lower the screen resolution, which again helps preserve battery. The OnePlus 6T also has a somewhat similar battery life, but the difference lies in the charging speed as OnePlus's proprietary fast charging charges the 6T faster than Huawei's 8W charger. The Nova 4 is a decent phone, no doubt, and it is facing a stern competition from many devices out there, with the OnePlus 6T being one of those. But the effort Huawei has put into the Nova 4 is quite commendable. The Huawei Nova 4 is a handy device that looks good, it has great internals including a wide-angle lens. However, the pricing it comes in is similar to the OnePlus 6T. The 6T costs slightly more, but even so it faces some competition and the OnePlus 6T wins in terms of performance. Having said that, with the Nova 4, you get wide-angle lens and this really great display with a punch hole. This is definitely a breath of fresh air from the usual notches. The EMUI experience has become a lot better and it is worth seeing what improvements Huawei has in future updates. But of course, if you are a stock Android person, you can add in extra money for the OnePlus 6T. But if you don't mind that, the Huawei Nova 4 is more or less the same at a lesser price tag. So that was our take on the Huawei Nova 4. What do you think about the device? Would you buy it for the price of $550 or some $65,000 here in Nepal? Do let us know in the comments below. Till then, I am Pratima Adhikari and keep watching Gadgetbyte.